preach this series excited that the Lord has revealed to me something that I just can't hardly wait to, to pour into your spirit. I really believe that God has ordained this series, and I want you to, to have ears that will hear what the Word says. I want you to have ears to be able to understand what God is going to do. I want to teach you some things that the Lord has revealed me, uh, revealed to me, and, and I believe when you can tap into the words of God, it will, trans, it will, it will transfer everything in your life into the right position. So we want to we want to believe God to do an awesome work today. Mark chapter nine is where we're taking our text. Mark chapter nine, verse seventeen. Everybody found it. It sounds so good to hear your Bible splitting pages. There's a soul for every seat. If there's room next to you, that means you need to invite somebody to be in church with you for next Sunday. Okay, if you see any a room for anybody, and remember, there's about ten that can sit in the aisle, so there's still seats and still souls that need to be in them. Mark chapter nine, verse seventeen. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and he gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to your disciples that could not that they should cast him out. But they could not. And Jesus answered him and saith, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway that spirit tear him and fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And the father said, Of a child. And oftentimes it's cast him into the fire and into the waters. To destroy him. But if thou canst do anything. Listen to the question. But God Jesus. If you can do anything. Have compassion on us. And help us. And Jesus says. If thou canst believe. All things are possible. To him that believeth. So Jesus turns it back on him. Hey sir. If you can believe. You're asking me. If I can help. But really. If you can believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thy my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked that foul spirit, saying to him, The dumb and deaf spirit I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many people thought he had died. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your powerful word. I thank you for the wonderful worship that has engulfed this church. I need you now to help me to preach the word that you've given me. God, I know it's a word from you. I know that it's a word that you have blessed me with for this congregation. But I pray, God, that I will not be a hindrance. I pray, God, that I will not stand in the way of what you want to say. I pray, God, that I will not be the reason people can't hear or receive. So I pray, God, that you remove that me out of the way and give me a divine, special, Holy Ghost-filled anointing that will break yokes of bondage, anoint ears and hearts and eyes that we can hear, receive, and see the power of your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. You may remember from part one of Crazy Prayer, me reading Luke chapter 17, verse 5, where it says, And the apostles said unto him, Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, Well, if you just have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you might say to this thick of mine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted into the sea, and it should obey you. Many times we've often think, and we've often thought, Bigger is better. More faith is better faith. Give me huge faith. Give me mountain moving faith. But in reality, we just simply need faith. And I'm not going to re-preach last week's message, but I want to uh, tell that again today because I want you to understand it's not about the size of your faith. This is simply about your faith. And I believe that all of us have faith. I believe that everybody in this room has got faith that they need to move mountains in their life. I believe every one of you has got the power and the ability to tell that sycamine tree to be uprooted and get out of your way. Because in Romans chapter 12, verse 3 says... God has dealt every man. God has, not anybody else, but God has given every man a measure of faith. So faith is already in you. And I want you to get this. It leads me to our text. Faith is already in you. Keep that thought in your mind. Now in Mark chapter 9, verse 14, a father comes to Jesus with a, a severe problem. His son is possessed with a demon. 
This demon is, is a powerful demon. It's stolen his speech. It has caused him to become very violent by foaming at the mouth. And this father has found himself at wit's end. He wants his son to be whole again. His, he wants his son to be a, a great again. He just wants his son to be maybe like he was when he was a toddler. He says that Jesus asked him, how long has this demon been in your son? And he said, since he was a child. So I'm sure when he says, I want my son to be normal, he had to go back to a time he could remember normality. The father finds himself frustrated, finds himself worried, probably confused, probably bothered. Because sometimes in life we come to Jesus and we find ourselves where the pastor couldn't do the work and the disciples couldn't do the work and the people who thought they, that we thought could cast out demons couldn't cast it out and we find ourselves in a very frustrating time. Oh, please, God, do something with my boy. Please drive this spirit out of him. And this is where things get interesting. When Jesus finds out that his apostles were not able he says, you unbelieving, faithless generation. How long will I be with you? How long will I have to dwell with you for you to believe in me? I wonder if Jesus asked that question of us in Rising Bar. I wonder if Jesus asked that question of, of, of Dane County, of, of Georgia, of the United States. How long will I have to dwell with you? How long will I have to tarry before you grasp on who I am? Because see, all of us have heard many sermons, but how many sermons will we have to hear before we grasp on who, who He is? How many praise songs and worship songs and how many concerts will we have to attend before we finally grasp hold to what we're singing about? When will we finally grasp hold to the power that we talk about? How many teachers will have to teach you another lesson before you actually believe that He is who He is? Amen. So Jesus took the Father in a very calm voice. How long has it been? Sir, it's been since he was a child, but please, if you can do anything, please, if you can only have passion on us, please, if you can only take pity. And Jesus says, one translation I read, it says this, Jesus asked me, if you can, meaning, you're asking me if I can? You're asking me? Because listen, you need to know there is nothing impossible with Jesus. Jesus can do everything and anything he wants. So it's really not up to the power of Jesus because we know that God speaks and things are created. Lord, listen, I gotta, uh, this really needs to be taught because you need to grab hold of this word. But you need to understand the, the power disconnection is not in Christ because Christ has the ability. Christ has the power. He has the unction. God can do anything he wants to do. So it's really not about what God can do. It's really about what you can believe. Amen. If you can believe, all things are possible. But that, the, the man says this phrase, Oh, I believe. Help my unbelief. He didn't say, God, give me faith. Because he already had faith. Amen. He didn't ask, Oh, God, give me bigger faith. Because he already had big faith. He said, God, help my unbelief. Yes. Please help my unbelief, Patty. I, please help my unbelief. I want you to see something. Remember, I've said this, and you're going to hear this a lot today. Faith is already in you. Come, faith is already in you. Patty is going to stand and represent faith. Because I want you to see this. Faith is already being given to you. Everything you need has already been given to you. God has given you faith. God wants you to move mountains. He wants you to get trees out of the way that's in your life. God wants you to flow in the gift of healing. And God wants you to be able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. He wants you to be able to rebuke demons and they run out. God wants you to flow in the power. The faith is all. He's already equipped you with faith. Because the, remember the Bible says, there is nothing impossible to him to believe. Yeah. Remember, Paul also says, I can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthens me. Yeah. How can I do all things? Because faith is already there. Yeah. I can already do everything I need to do spiritually because faith is already there. Amen. So let me try to work. Let me try to explain this. Because I want you to be able to see this. The problem is not our faith. <coughs> it's the position of our faith. Because if God has already granted us a measure of faith, yeah. faith is already there. Faith is already in your life, but it's the position of your faith that is the problem. See, the devil wants to stop you. The devil doesn't want you to flow in faith because when you flow in faith, you have the power to overcome anything he throws at you. Right. 
When you live in faith, there's not a battle you're going to be defeated with. There's not a mountain you're not going to climb. There's not a valley you're not going to go through. That's because there is faith inside of you, and faith gives you the ability to overcome the obstacles of your life. So the devil says, I've got to do something to stop faith in the life. And that's the devil going, oh my goodness, there's already faith there. So what am I going to do? How am I going to mess this child of God up? Because if they only realize they've got faith to move me out of the way. They've got faith to pray a prayer. They've got faith to, to tell the sick of the tree to get out of the way. The faith is when the devil says, oh, i gotta get a, I got to get a plan. Yeah. So he begins to send things in your life to get faith out of position. The first thing is fear. He will, the devil loves to bring fear to block your faith. The devil loves to have fear to come. Now watch this. Faith is already there. So now fear comes into your life. Faith is still there. Right. But fear is placed in there. Maybe it's the fear of failure. Maybe it's the fear of exposure. Maybe it's the fear of being mocked. Maybe it's the fear of the unknown. <laughs> I don't know what it could be afraid. The enemy brings fear into your life. And before long, faith is out of position. Faith is still there. But faith is out of position in your life. So when you begin to see a problem, what do you see? Fear. When you begin to see Goliath, what do you see? Fear. When you begin to see a, 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 a financial a shortcoming, what do you begin? You see fear instead of faith. Y'all, right, anybody tapping into me? Yeah. All right, because the devil wants to cause something to hinder what God has already given you to be able to flow in His power. So he, you're blocked by fear, and then he gives you doubt. The enemy causes doubt to come in. He causes us to think, "Well, I'm not worthy enough." To have. I, I begin to doubt that I'm good enough. I begin to doubt that I can get a prayer through. Why? Because fear has blocked your faith. So now doubt comes in if I wonder if God can. I don't really believe God can do this. Listen, and some people actually say it. I don't think God can, but some people say it by not praying. Amen. Sometimes it's not that you verbally go, I don't believe God. But you show your actions because you don't verbally say a prayer of faith to God. And therefore, faith is out of position. And now you are trying to figure out what you're going to do, how you're going to live, how you're going to respond. Because you do not pray. I mean, if you really believe God can move mountains, wouldn't you not tell that mountain, move? If you really believe God can heal your baby, wouldn't you pray, heal my baby? I mean, when you really believe the Bible is true and you really believe God can, then you have crazy prayer because you're not worried about fear, you're not worried about doubt because faith is already in your life. Amen. Look at the third thing he gives you. That's anxiety. Anxiety comes. Anxiety cripples church leaders. Can I tell you something? Anxiety cripples pastors. It cripples praise team singers. The, the enemy comes in. He cripples members and families. He robs families with anxiety. Anxiety comes into your life and you forget about the God that is in control. Because you're so worried and you're so stressed out and, and, and you're so at the edge that you no longer think about the faith because it's out of position. You no longer even see the problem through the eyes of faith because you are so worried. You don't. You can't come to church and worship because you were up all night worrying with anxiety. <laughs> you, you don't. You don't. You don't think about praying because your hair is falling out because you're so stressed and all you see is fear and doubt and anxiety. So you you can't even think about calling out to God. You forget about quality of life because all you see is fear, anxiety, and doubt. You forget about, oh, I, I'm an overcomer because every time you look in your spirit, you see fear, anxiety, and doubt. You forget about that God has created you to be something greater than you are because all you see is fear, anxiety, and doubt. So you find yourself stuck. But faith is still there. You need to leave this place today knowing faith is there. Yeah. It's just lost. It's out yeah. of position. Yeah. Oh. You may have anxiety and you may have doubt, but the thing is, God has not taken your faith away. Yeah. The devil has not, my God, I feel yeah. the devil has not robbed your faith. The devil has not stolen. The devil can't take away what God has already done inside you. So, no matter how my faith is not there, it's just out of position. 
And then he sends this magic tool. Intimidation. The devil loves to make you feel smaller by making somebody else feel bigger. The devil loves to make you feel like you can't because you think only somebody else can. And supposedly there's somebody better than you to do the work. There's somebody, quote, more in tune with God to be able to do that. And the devil makes you think you're not the one. And he makes you feel minute and unimportant. And the devil begins to diminish you by intimidation. And you become so intimidated that he just made somebody who God created to be a giant in the right. kingdom work. Yes. Now you feel like you are so minute and so unimportant yes. that you no longer even try. And yes. it's because you have been intimidated by the enemy. Right. And you come to church and now you've got fear. You've got a doubt and you've got anxiety and you've got intimidation. Where is faith? Why can't I have a prayer answer? Why can't I tap into what God is? I, oh, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't, I can't. Can. And guess what happens? At one of these points, you walk away and give up on power of God in your Amen. life. And you walk out of church and you blame it on something else. When in reality, faith was just out of position. Amen. Amen. And then the next one, bondage. The devil will attach something to your life. The devil will attach something to your life to take place in your faith. I want to say that again. The devil will attach something to your life that will take place of your faith. And it can be anything from food to drugs, from beer to cigarettes, from shopping to hunting, from working to playing. It can be any of that stuff. And the devil allows that bondage to be able to come. And now you're in a position to where you wish you had fear, faith, but the now, because of all these other things, you're relying on bondage. We begin to rely on the things we're bound to. A drug addict hooked on drugs doesn't rely on faith. They rely on what? Drugs. Their faith is so out of position that they are now relying on their bondage. They've been intimidated. They've lived in fear. They've had doubt. They've had anxiety. And now they are bound and they cannot seem to even find where it all ends up. And then it comes to this point. Warfare. Sometimes the devil takes position. And this is where everything begins to work together. He takes a very offensive approach. See, once he can cause you to fear, and once he can cause you to have a little bit of anxiety, and once he can cause you to have a little bit of doubt, make a window there so everybody can see your words. What once all of this begins to go together. You see, in warfare, anxiety and intimidation become attached, which leads to doubt and fear. When your intimidation and your anxiety meet, now you have doubt and fear. I'm going to say that again. When your anxiety and your intimidation attach, now you live a life of doubt and fear. These battles have got to get out of your life. See, listen, remember, faith is still there somewhere. It's out of position in your life. Under all of the struggles, faith is still there. Under all of your hurt, faith is still there. Under all of your frustration and your bitterness and your anger, faith is still there somewhere. Amen. So what do you do, Pastor? Okay, you've made your point with these six things. I probably could have made a point of 12. What do I do when I find myself with my faith out of position? The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by what? The Word. So what do you do? Well, how do I reposition my faith? I have got to attack it with the Word. Amen. 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 Right. Psalms 27, verse 1 through 7. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this I will be confident. One thing, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house 
of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and the choir of his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted above my enemies round about. Therefore, I offer this tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me. So all of a sudden, we have attached fear. I'm not going to be afraid because I've got one desire. Not to be a millionaire. Not to be able to, to run the, the gold medal race. I've got one desire. God, that is to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I don't care how many enemies camp around me. I don't care how many battles I go through. I will not fear. I set my eyes on Jesus Christ. I'm applying the word of God. I will not let fear rule in my heart. Now watch this. We're going to move fear into its position. Yes. Number two, doubt. How do I handle doubt? James 1, verse 6. When you ask, you must believe Amen. and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Can't doubt. Mark 11, verse 23. Truly I tell you, if anyone says in the to the mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart but believes what they say will happen, it will be done for them. You have to attack your problems with the word. You have got to find a scripture to link with your weapon. Listen, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. Yeah. You get a word, yeah. you stand by that word, you get it embedded in your life, you begin to say, the, the Bible says, come on now, the Bible says that if I only believe, I am going to say to this mountain, be removed. And, and listen, you begin to claim the word of God. Right. You begin yeah. to say, listen, faith is there. We just got to reposition it. Yeah. Yeah. Anxiety, Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7, be anxious for about nothing. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all your understanding, will guard and keep your hearts in Christ Jesus. The Bible does not, but there's a, there's a scripture that says, what, how many cubits can worry add to your life? It doesn't add one inch to your height. It doesn't make you become wider or wiser. Why do you worry when you can trust in God? What, where, where's the person at? Uh, anxiety. Listen, we're not going to be anxious for anything. We are by prayer and supplication going to make, we've got, I am not going to worry because I know in whom I believe. Yeah. I'm not going to be troubled because I trust you, God. Yeah. I know things are difficult, but I know there's faith somewhere inside of me. And I am, going to, I am not going to allow worry and anxiety to destroy my life. Amen. 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 Intimidation. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. Yeah. A worker who does not need to be ashamed and currently handles the word of truth. Correctly handles the word of truth. Listen to me now. You kill intimidation when you go, I'm going to do all I can do for God. I'm not worried about what she does or he does or they do. And when you begin to realize you, 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 you have got to correctly handle the word of God. And when you do that, you know that you are going to stand before God in praise and worship and honor and in power. And you're not worthless and you don't have to be intimidated by anybody else when you are who you are in God. Amen. Intimidation should not bind a child of God because you have been given everything you need to be who God wants you to be. You just got to get faith in position. Now listen, and then we've got bondage. Where's my bondage person? Bondage. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. For we have not received the spirit of bondage, again, into fear, but we received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Galatians 4, verse 3. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are the sons, 
God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, you are the heir of God through Christ. You need to realize you don't have to be bound. God never intended for the church to be bound. God never intended for you to live in any type of bondage. He has paid the price. The sacrifice has been made for you to live free. Free in the spirit. If you walk, listen, we don't walk by faith. We walk by our, or we don't walk by feelings. We walk by our faith. But you need to know, you will not walk by faith if it's out of position. Amen. When faith is out of position in your life, you cannot walk in the correct way. Oh, yeah. I, want you to, I want you to hear the word now. I want this to get into your spirit because I want you to understand you don't have to be bound. Jesus Christ has set you free. We are trying to work to get position in our lives. The things you need are already there. Well, what about warfare? What about when all five of these things you've mentioned come together into the head of warfare? 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. For though we live in the world, we don't wage war with the things the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that set itself up against the knowledge of God. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. I want you to see this. Because warfare, <coughs> everything is attacking you together. And here's what we do. All of us are guilty. We look to ourselves. Why? Because my faith is out of position. I look at my own strength and my own abilities. I get my own counsel, my own guidance, my own direction. I do everything. That I'm going to win this battle. But you won't win until you get faith in the right place and you're able to surrender your life to God and you're able to go, God, I'm not fighting with human fleshly power. I'm fighting not with a sword or a spear, but I'm coming in the name of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, and I know that God will destroy my enemy. You have got to put position of faith in the right position. Yeah. See, you can all squeeze in right there. You have got to put faith. Now watch this. Because look, in your life, hold your little sign up. Fear may still be there. Doubt may still be there. Anxiety may still be there. Intimidation may still be there. Bondage may still be there. Warfare may still be there. God doesn't do, you may, you'll still have to fight battles. But the thing is now faith is in the right position. And everything else comes to have faith. The Bible says all things are possible to him to believe. Why? Because faith is in the right position. You have got to let God help your unbelief. God, I've got faith in here, but you've got to remove these things called unbelief. See, the unbelief struggles is because there's something there causing you not to believe. Because you're going to watch this. And this is one of the things I'm most excited about. Listen, I want you to see this. When faith is now in the right position, look, there's no hindrance between faith and what's ahead of you. In other words, I can now flow in the gift of faith because I don't have, I have it's in the right position. Amen. I can now flow in the gift of healing because I've got faith in the right position. Yeah. Yeah. I can now flow in the gift of deliverance. Why? Right. Because faith is in the right position. Yeah. Yeah. I have got the power to lay hands yeah. on the sick. Yeah. I've got the power yeah. to preach the gospel. Yeah. I've got the power to yeah. yeah. faith is in position. Yeah. 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 You have got to understand there's not a person in this room that has to pray for bigger faith or more faith. Right. You just got to pray that your unbelief gets out of the way so faith can do her work. Amen. You have got to be able to believe, okay, somehow, God, I'm going to find words in the Bible. I'm going I'm to find somebody who can help me look up scripture. I'm going to type in words on the internet until the right scripture pops up. I'm going to quote them. I'm going to name them. I'm going I'm to claim them. I'm going I'm to speak them. I'm going to declare them. I'm going to pray them. Because every time the word of God begins to be attached to your prayer, all of a sudden, I said this last week, you, God is bound by his word. And when you begin to speak God's word, you're releasing that in your life. And faith, faith cometh by hearing the word. The more I hear the word, the more faith moves in position, the more you flow in the giftedness of your Call it. Y'all with me? Yeah. 
Madison, if you'll slide your sign down and go to the piano. Now listen. <laughs> because I want you to understand the importance. I prayed a prayer this week. This way. God, our church must know that our 30 minutes of preaching is not just to entertain them for 30 Amen. minutes. Amen. If you could only understand the word of God that you need to grasp hold to. Oh, how long will Jesus continue to do a great work in rising bond and you not have faith in the position to believe him? <coughs> how long will he dwell with you? How many sermons and teaching series will preachers preach and you buy and listen to? But the whole issue is that you have got to grasp hold with your faith that God is able. And I like to quote this scripture. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I'm able to ask or think. If you put faith in the right position, it moves you out of conflict into jubilee. It moves you out of your desert place into a land that flows with milk and honey. It moves you out of a place of bondage into a place of liberty. But you've got to get your faith in the proper position. So let me ask you. If you guys will stand without blocking faith, come stand and say, I can see you. What in your life? What in your life is causing you not to flow in faith? It's already in you. God has already given you faith. What in your life is hindering the position? God wants you to move mountains. That wasn't just a promise for a few chosen. It was a promise for all his children. Oh, that must be some kind of T.D. Jakes, Benny Hinn anointing. No, it's your anointing. Your faith is in the wrong place. Amen. When I make excuses why one pastor can flow an anointing and I can't, then my faith is in the wrong position. When I took the Rising Fawn Church of God, Brother David Smith said this. Don't be intimidated by that big church across the street. And I laughed and I said, I'm not intimidated by another church. I'm going to preach my gospel yeah. and get with me. Yeah. Why would I be intimidated by a bigger church? I'm just going to do what I do by calling my God. I don't flow in intimidation. There are people that maybe I have to pray about that help that kind of make me feel a little bad about myself. But you need to know that's only the devil trying to reposition your faith. Amen. You see, when, when these things begin to happen in your life, you've got to understand it is the enemy trying to get faith out of position so that he can hinder what you're supposed to do. Yeah. i got to close. If you're going to run and not be weary, if you're going to walk and not faith, then you've got to have faith. Because watch what happens. Without faith, I begin to run and I trip over my intimidation, my bondage, my warfare, my fear, my doubt, or my anxiety. I begin to run and instantly fall because faith is out of position. Crazy prayer. Your prayers will become more crazy when your faith gets in position. And I encourage you, let's have crazy faith. Stand with me. Sister Kim, I, it looks like people are freezing.